if there is no God, then the Nazis were not wrong. All right. Wouldn't a virgin birth also be illogical? No, it's nothing well. illogical. We could have all been born through a virgin birth. There's nothing wrong with genocide if atheism is true. One of the most fascinating and infuriating aspects of apologetics is its uncanny ability to masquerade as academic rigor while being anything but. Time and time again, we see defenders of the faith making bold, sweeping statements about fields they have absolutely no expertise in, banking on the hope that their audience either won't look it up or can't look it up. Apologists often speak with such certainty that they create the illusion of understanding, a trick that works because many listeners lack the tools to discern where their reasoning falls apart. This is where the pigeon playing chess meme comes from. They knock over the pieces, strut around the board as if they've won, and expect applause for their brilliance. And from their devoted flock, they often get it. In reality, what we see is more akin to intellectual chaos, an empty show of confidence without any substantial engagement with the complexities of the issue at hand. Now, I have a reason for trusting my mind, at least in part, because it is ultimately the product of the vast intelligence of a personal God, as is the universe out there. The Torah took an evolutionary approach to ending slavery not a, a, a revolutionary approach. Had the Torah said no slaves, it would have been ignored. Now, if I were to ask you to name confidently incorrect defenders of the faith, you'd be spoiled for choice. William Lane Craig, Lee Strobel, Muhammad Hijab, just to name a few. But today, let's focus on someone who truly exemplifies this phenomenon. Frank Turek. When atheists are arguing there is no God, they actually have to steal aspects of reality that would only exist if God existed in order to say he doesn't exist. Get some help! Frank Turek has become a powerhouse of a celebrity in Christian apologetic circles, which is rather impressive considering his actual credentials. He's best known for co-authoring I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, a title clearly designed to be ironic, though it leaves you wondering if it inadvertently exposes more about their approach to belief than intended. It's as if they agree that faith is a bad thing. Armed with a master's degree in apologetics and a doctorate in ministry, That's right, I have a PhD in truthology from Christian Tech. Tarek has made a career out of debating atheists and promoting Christian doctrines. He's charismatic, he's confident, he yells, We already know the truth! This has to be evidence for it! He yells a lot, I don't know what we're yelling about! And, as we see, he's very frequently wrong. Very wrong. Even atheists today are admitting that space, matter, and time had a beginning out of nothing. You made that up. I know. Like many of you, I've watched with concern as findable, reliable, objective news has become increasingly challenging. You are fake news. Social media algorithms prioritize sensational headlines that generate clicks, sacrificing depth and nuance. This is precisely why ground news has become an indispensable tool in my daily routine. It enables me, you, to analyze multiple sources covering the same story, examining their bias, credibility, and ownership patterns. In a world where it's easy to get stuck in an echo chamber, Ground News provides a way out. You can check them out at ground.news slash rationality. Let me demonstrate its value with a recent example, Brazil's temporary suspension of X. Big story. Well, with Ground News, I can instantly pull over 400 articles from around the globe to see that over 60% of them are rated highly factual, a rating indicative of how subjective the reporting is likely to be. Looking closer at how different outlets cover the story, I can see how each is titling and spinning the narrative. While some sources focused on speculating about Elon Musk's response to the ban, others provided straightforward reporting on the Brazilian Supreme Court's direct order. This comprehensive feature is invaluable. It helps you maintain perspective on the full scope of any story near instantly, not just a single viewpoint. In an increasingly polarized world, this balanced approach to news consumption has never been more essential. Ground News is giving my viewers 50% off their unlimited access Vantage plan. This is the best deal of the year, and it will only be available for a limited time. Experience it for yourself at ground.news slash rationality. If you value balanced, reliable news coverage, I'm confident that you'll find this tool as indispensable as I have. It's thanks to Ground News that I can keep making projects like this. And so if you do sign up, you'll be helping out the channel as well. Thank you. 
Tarek is a master in delivering complex sounding arguments with absolute certainty, which can be quite persuasive if one is not informed on the topic and not paying close attention. This tactic is effective precisely because it exploits our tendency to equate confidence with credibility. But when you dig deeper, you almost always find that there's little substance beneath the surface. His presentations are a flashy facade with no solid foundation. Today, we're going to focus on one of his claims about the nature of infinity and the beginning of the universe. What is the definition of an infinite? You see, like many apologists, Tarek attempts to use the concept of infinity to argue that the universe must have had a beginning. And let's appreciate the audacity here. Without any formal training in mathematics, physics, or even philosophy, Frank confidently asserts that we can know that the universe had a beginning, and he does so using pure big brain logic. What is the definition of an infinite? Something that has no end, right? What? What? Well, here we are today. We're at the end. So can this line be infinite? No, because an infinite has no end, right? It can't be infinite. And can you add anything to an infinite? No, by definition, an infinite, whatever it is, is the sum of all possible numbers. Wrong. But tomorrow, when tomorrow comes, we're going to add another day. And the day after that, we'll add another day. And the day after that, we'll add another day. You get the idea. So this timeline, no matter how far back it goes, can't be infinite. It had to have a beginning. Normally, this is where I jump in and start pointing out the problems. But today, we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to examine a conversation featuring three brilliant people. Philosopher Alex Malpass, philosopher Daniel Linford, and science communicator Phil Helper. Together, these three will dissect Turek's arguments, exposing the cracks and chasms in his reasoning. What is the definition of an infinite? Something that has no end, right? Let's start with Alex's initial observation, which cuts straight to the heart of the problem. So he starts off by saying um, the definition of an infinite is, and there's a bit some kind of pantomime, tries to get the audience to finish the sentence. Something that has no end, right? I don't know why he thought they would know that that's what he was going to say, that the, inf the definition of infinite is something that doesn't have an end, because... Is that common usage? Maybe it is, but anyway, it's not the definition of an infinite. You know, if you try, you know, walking on the earth in a straight line, you'll never come to an end, right? But the diameter of the earth isn't infinite, right? There's loads of obvious counterexamples to this sort of stupid uh, simpleton definition of what it means for in to be an infinite. A simpleton definition of what it means for in to be an infinite. And there it is, in the very first sentence of his argument, Tarek stumbles. Something that has no end, right? This isn't just a minor oversight, it's a fundamental misunderstanding that undermines everything that follows. Tarek conflates having no end with being infinite. To put it into perspective, it's like defining evolution as monkeys turning into humans. To anyone who understands the subject, it's immediately clear that the person doesn't know what they're talking about. But Malpass's response reveals something far more profound than just pointing out an error. He provides an illuminating thought experiment that exposes the fundamental confusion at the heart of Turek's reasoning. If you try you know, walking on the earth in a straight line, you'll never come to an end, right? But the diameter of the earth isn't infinite. Indeed. Consider walking around the earth in a straight line. You'd never come to an end. Yet this seemingly infinite journey takes place on an unmistakably finite surface. The Earth's circumference is precisely 40,075 kilometers, a finite number we can measure and verify. But again, you could walk forevermore. Well, if we rule out that the Earth didn't once exist and now does exist and probably won't exist in the future. And we will rule these things out because that's the point of the thought experiment. This endless journey on a finite surface helps us understand where Turek's logic goes astray. Put it this way, we've been walking around the Earth for an infinite amount of time, circling it countless times. Then, all of a sudden, we pause at our current location and make an observation. Here we are, standing at this specific point. Turek is declaring that, since we're at this specific point, 
we can somehow infer that there was a first step, a beginning to our journey. So this timeline, no matter how far back it goes, can't be infinite. It had to have a beginning. But this conclusion simply doesn't follow. The fact that we can identify our current position tells us nothing about whether our journey had a beginning. We could have been walking the earth forever with no first step, no initial movement. The path is finite in circumference, sure, but the duration of our walk could well have been infinite. This analogy illustrates the possibility of infinite temporal progression, even within a bounded system. Just as we can walk endlessly around a finite earth, the temporal dimension of the universe could go back forever, it could be infinite, even if its spatial or material dimensions are finite. Or put another way, the mere fact that we can identify now as a specific moment no more requires a beginning of time than our position on Earth requires a starting point to our endless walk. There's no contradiction here. We have models, we have theories that either have the Big Bang as the beginning or the Big Bang is just a phase the universe goes through. There could be an earlier phase of the universe. The universe could have been contracting and collapsing and then bounced back into what we think of as the Big Bang, or there could have been a completely different universe, almost unrelated to ours, that sort of gave birth to us. The failure to consider such possibilities, to explore the full richness of what infinity means in both mathematics and physics, is precisely what undermines Turek's argument. He presents a false dichotomy, either time had a beginning, or we couldn't have reached the present moment. But as our walking example demonstrates, reality offers more sophisticated possibilities that his simplistic logic fails to capture. And can you add anything to an infinite? No. But of course, you know, it, he says you can't add anything to infinity, which is um, just colossally ignorant. Colossally ignorant. Not only is it false that you can't add uh, something to an infinite, there's straightforward mathematical systems about infinity, uh, in which they codify exactly how to do that, like rigorously. So he's completely wrong that. about that. Mathematicians have been working with infinity, not just talking about it, but rigorously studying it for a very long time. There's an entire branch of mathematics called transfinite arithmetic, developed by Georg Cantor in the 19th century, that deals specifically with operations involving infinite numbers. Yes, Frank you can add to infinity. In fact, infinity comes in different sizes, and you can perform operations on infinite sets just as you can with finite sets. Frank's ignorance here isn't just a minor slip-up, it's fundamental. Claiming you can't add to infinity is like confidently stating that triangles can't have three sides. Can you add anything to an infinite? No. It's not just wrong, it's a misunderstanding of the basics. This isn't advanced mathematics we're talking about, it's foundational knowledge taught to anyone who studies the subject seriously. To make such an egregious claim, especially while presenting yourself as an intellectual authority, isn't just ignorant, it's willfully misleading. And the worst part, he's doing this with the kind of certainty that makes his audience believe he's actually profound. And can you add anything to an infinite? No. Now, despite these two egregious blunders, perhaps the most devastating critique comes when Alex addresses his central argument about time and infinity. Just suppose that there's an infinite amount of time prior to today. Like, what's the contradiction? I mean, you're just saying it would have taken an infinite amount of time for today to arrive is just restating that premise. Like, that's what we're supposed to imagine. And then we're supposed to be given some kind of re reason to think that that's not the case. And it's simply just saying that it would have taken an infinite amount of time to get here. Tarek thinks he's found a contradiction, but all he's done is restate his premise in a way that sounds paradoxical to those who don't understand infinity. So this timeline, no matter how far back it goes, can't be infinite. It had to have a beginning. William Lane Craig employs a similar tactic with Hilbert's Hotel, presenting it as a contradiction when, in reality, it's a well-understood concept in set theory. When you have an actual infinite, you, you generate these kinds of crazy situations that I think are plausibly uh, metaphysically impossible. There is no contradiction. The paradox arises only when you misinterpret the mathematics. At this juncture, Dr. Daniel Linford adds another layer to the discussion. People sometimes have in mind is this idea that you start at a point infinitely far in the past, mm. then you, you're unable to get to the present. People who say that the past is infinite are not saying that there's a point infinitely far in the past that you need to start at to get to the present. Instead, they're mm. saying there's 
no point in the past at which you start. Rightly understood, this point completely unravels Frank's argument. And we can put it this way, Frank is treating today as though we've arrived here by counting backwards from infinity. Yes, we can label today, for instance, as minus one, yesterday as minus two, the day before that as minus three, and so on ad infinitum, which means without end in Latin, because that's precisely the point. It extends without end. You can count back forever. There is no beginning. The fact that we can label today with some arbitrary number is just that. It's merely a label we've given it. And it's this label that does all of the heavy lifting when it comes to misleading our intuition. It makes us think we've identified something paradoxical or absurd or even contradictory when we simply haven't. <laughs> So let's recap Frank's mistakes. He misunderstands the definition of infinity, equating having no end with being infinite. Something that has no end, right? He incorrectly asserts that you can't add to infinity, ignoring entire branches of mathematics that do just that. And can you add anything to an infinite? No. He presents a supposed contradiction in the concept of an infinite past, which upon closer examination is nothing more than restating his flawed premise. Well, here we are today. We're at the end. So can this line be infinite? No, because an infinite has no end, right? And perhaps most egregiously, he does all of this with unwavering confidence, leading his audience to believe that these are well-established truths rather than fundamental misunderstandings. But here's what really gets me. All this information is readily available. The mathematics of infinity isn't some closely guarded secret, it's taught in schools and universities worldwide. What's more, the logical flaws in these arguments have been pointed out countless times by mathematicians, philosophers, and physicists. Yet Turek continues to make the same false statements, and just as confidently. This isn't just about Frank Turek being wrong about infinity, it's about a pattern we see repeatedly in apologetics, a reliance on the audience's lack of specialized knowledge to push a narrative that doesn't hold up under scrutiny. It's intellectual sleight of hand. But how do such basic errors continue to find success in the age of information? Part of the answer lies in the competing narratives that saturate our world. Apologetics, and even the Bible, often paints experts as fools or as part of some conspiratorial agenda to undermine faith. This creates an environment where misinformation can thrive because it's bolstered by distrust of actual expertise. Moreover, those who attend Tarek's talks and consume his content aren't typically there for the pursuit of truth. Let's be honest, they're there for confirmation. We all want to believe that we've got it right, and apologists like Turek are more than willing to sell that assurance. They package complex topics into easily digestible sound bites that reinforce pre-existing beliefs, sidestepping the messy nuance that comes with genuine understanding. When individuals like Turek present such arguments, they not only misinform their audience, but they also do a disservice to genuine discourse. They muddy the waters, making it harder for people to engage with complex ideas critically. In the end, truth isn't determined by how confidently you assert something. It's determined by how well your claims stand to scrutiny. And as we've seen today, when it comes to Frank Turek's assertions about infinity, they crumble under the most basic examination. Just colossally ignorant. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you want to see more deep dives just like this. Lastly, I just want to again thank Ground News for sponsoring the video. I highly recommend their product, please check them out. You can click the link below and you can learn more about what they have to offer. Thanks.